Hello, this is Dr. J, and I'm going to give you an introduction to the finite impulse response filters, where I describe this filter in terms of a generalized difference equation. Then I'll show you how to build a filter using adders, scalar multipliers, and unit delays. And this is just going to be a simple introduction of filters, and we'll get into more complex filters later on in future videos. We'll start our discussion with a general FIR filter where we describe it in terms of a general difference equation. In our case, we're going to use a causal system. So we're starting from k equals 0 to m, weighted by these coefficients. We'll call these filter coefficients. Here's our input x, and that includes all the present values and the past values. When we do this and add up all up this weighted sum of inputs, we have what we call an output of this uh, filter. We did an earlier video concerning about a moving average filter. And in examples of earlier videos, we used this one, where we took three consecutive inputs, the present and the two past values, and just averaged it by three. So this is just basically averaging the, these three values. Again, our length of our filter is m plus 1, or 3, where m is equal to 2. And our weights are equally weighted for these three inputs by one third. So these are the coefficients describing our FIR filter. Going from values of 0, 1, and 2. When BKs do not have the same weights as in this general uh, difference equation that's a special case, then we call it a weighted running average. And here's an example of that. So here's an example of a finite impulse response filter, or FIR filter, with different weighted coefficients. We'll start off with our generalized difference equation, where once again, y is our output, x is our input, and bk are filter coefficients, and m plus 1 describes the length of this filter. We're going to start off with a causal filter, where k is equal to 0, and here's our set of filter coefficients going from negative 2 for k equals 0 all the way to k equals 3 with a filter coefficient of 1. So these are our corresponding filter coefficients. For this example, we have m is equal to 3, which defines a length of m plus 1, or 4 in this example. And this is also a third order filter, so you can think of m equal to 3 describing the order of filter because a third order filter means that not only do you have the present values but you have to store three values as well of the input three past values of the input starting off with this generalized uh, difference equation where k is equal to 0 all the way to m equal to 3 we can form our filter based on this example so in this example, when k is equal to negative 2, the weight of the present input is equal to negative 2. When k is equal to 1, then it has a filter coefficient of 3. When k is equal to 2, we have a weight of 2. And when k is equal to 3, we have a weight of 1. So this is our weights of our input storing the present and past values here, the past three values with its associated weights. Again, these negative 2, 3, 2, and 1 here are our filter coefficients of how we're going to weight our present and past values. So here's another example. In this case, it's a 7-point moving average. So we're just going to start off from k equals 0 to 6, and we're going to weigh it by 1, 7. So we're averaging 7 values of the input. This is the equation, and we have the filter coefficients all having equal weight of 1 7. And again, here's our filter coefficients with a weight of 1 7 going from k equal to 0 to 6. Now you can, there's a closed form formula where you can describe this filter moving average in a more compact form. And this is shown on the next slide. So we're going to take our seven point moving average described by this general difference equation. 
And we're going to specialize the case when our input is a complex exponential. We'll help understand the concept of frequency response later in later videos. So here our x our input is a complex exponential e to the minus j omega hat n where omega hat is our normalized radian frequency for discrete time signals and systems. I rearranged this uh, formula so that we define a beta as e to the minus j omega hat raised to the nth power. I did this because instead of adding up these individual terms of beta n's, uh, we have a closed form formula described by this equation here. 1 minus beta raised to the nth power divided by 1 minus beta. So here we have n equals 0 and m minus 1. In our example here, m minus 1 is equal to 6, so our m is equal to 7. So when you substitute the appropriate uh, values here, we have 1 7th uh, multiplied by 1 e to the minus j 7 omega hat divided by 1 minus e to the minus j omega hat. I'm going to do some algebraic gymnastics where I'm going to factor out the numerator and the denominator as follows. Here I, in the numerator I factored out e to the minus j 7 omega hat divided by 2. So I took half of this argument here in this complex exponential and factored it out. So I can get the e to the j omega hat divided by 2 minus e to the minus j 7 omega hat divided by 2 or 7 halves omega hat. I did this because you should recognize that in this uh, numerator that this e to the j minus e to the minus j looks like a sine function if I divide this by 2j. In fact, I'm going to divide 2j both in the numerator and the denominator to get a, a sine function. But notice in the numerator when you multiply e to the minus j omega hat 2 multiplied by e to the j omega hat divided by 2 this is equal to 1. So we didn't change the equation, we just did some algebraic gymnastics to uh, describe this uh, filter. Also I forgot to put a 1 7th in front of here, so we need to put a 1 7th here. Um, so in the denominator we're going to do the same thing, factor out half of this argument which leaves as 1 half of omega hat 2, and so that leaves our uh, formula given as follows here. When we do this, I'm going to replace this after I divide by 2j both in the numerator and the denominator to give us a sine function in the numerator and a sine function in the denominator. When I do this, we have what's in this argument is 7 halves omega hat or sine 7 omega hat divided by 2 and in the denominator we have a sine omega hat divided by 2. And then I simply and I added my uh, seventh. I forgot to put the one seventh here, so here I included in here in this final formula. And then this right here is e to the minus j three omega hat. We'll see later on when we talk about the Fourier transform of of um, discrete time systems that this is just a delay term. But let's concentrate on this. Uh, filter description of sine over sine and we'll see that this has like a low pass filtering effect. Again, when we average values it filters out the large fluctuations and it just smooths out our input. So our final output is basically a smooth version of our input. Here's a plot of the finite impulse response or FIR 7 point moving average filter. Here's our output, and you can see that the output is zero at certain places, and that means that the sine function in this numerator goes to zero. So this is where it occurs at different points when the output goes to zero. And we'll see that this describes basically a low pass filter in future videos. Um, I'll show you how to develop a discrete time filters from a block diagram perspective where we have adders, scalar multipliers, and unit delays. Signing off is Dr. J.